In this segment, we take a look at the simple interrupted suturing technique. Start on the side of the wound furthest from you so that you are suturing towards yourself. Hold up one edge of the wound with a tooth forceps. The point of the needle enters the skin at right angle at an appropriate distance from the wound edge. This would depend on your needle size and the tissues you are suturing. Drive the needle through by a rotatory movement of the needle holder, recreating the arc of a circle. If the wound edges are close together, you can drive the needle across both sides of the wound. Otherwise, you may find it more accurate to re-grasp your needle before placing the suture on the other side of the wound. Pull on the suture, leaving a convenient length at the tail end of the suture. This length will depend on whether you intend to use a hand tie or an instrument tie. Tie a knot to one side of the wound, rather than placing the knot directly over the wound. Take care to just approximate the wound edges and not strangle it the tissues. Hold the sutures together in this fashion and your assistant will cut it for you. Cut suture to an appropriate length. Too short and there is a danger of the knot slipping. Too long and it comes in the way of the next suture. Note the rotatory movement of the needle holder by a pronation to supination movement of the hand. Try to place your sutures evenly from each other and equidistant from the wound edge. Look again at the direction in which the needle enters the skin. Entering the skin at right angles help to avert the wound edges. Observe how the needle is pulled out along the direction of its curve, which forms the arc of a circle. The simple interrupted suture is the easiest to perform and can be used for most skin suturing. Should the wound become infected, a few sutures can be removed without disrupting the entire closure.